maker Rick Baker has made werewolves in an American werewolf in London, monkeys in Greystoke, and aliens in Star Wars. But his career really started when the mechanical King Kong designed for the 1976 remake simply couldn't do what the director needed. Incidentally, if you're tired of chicken, tuna fish, you know, just a vegetable salad, these are delicious. Carry them like this, they're used to it, until you cook them. The recipe for a monster success in the 1976 remake was the old standby, a man in a gorilla suit. The snake's a fake, but Rick Baker is very much alive behind the latex and yak hair costume. While Rick landed the job of performing the king, the line at the auditions didn't exactly snake around the block. I think the one reason I actually got the job to wear the costume of King Kong was because it was a job that nobody else wanted. You, know, <laughs> you have to be nuts to do it. Um, I, and, and, I, and I fit the bill. I was nuts. You know, I, was, uh, I grew up wearing sweaty suits. You know, it's a very uncomfortable thing to do. Uh, you have these huge pieces of plastic in your eyes. I really square contact lenses that cover my whole visible eye. Uh, the suit weighed over 50 pounds, and uh, it was very hot. And, and there was a couple times I actually thought I was going to get ill and I actually vomit in the suit, which I was terrified of. I, I would never really eat a big lunch or anything because of that, because, you know, I'm sealed inside this mask. It would have been a horrible thing to experience. You know? But Rick had more problems than just wearing the suit. The producers wanted him to be an ape man. He wanted to be more of an ape. I wanted Kong to walk quadruped the way an ape does. They wanted him to walk biped like a human. So I, was, I always had this constant battle of what I wanted to do with Kong and what they wanted to do. But one thing that we agreed on was we wanted to have some real character and some emotion. And uh, I forget how many heads we had now. It's been quite a while, but we had several different heads that I'd wear that were operated by uh, push-pull cables. When they when they'd move a cable off camera, it would move a lip or something. Uh, so most of the facial expressions were, were controlled by people off camera. All I could do is what I could do with my eyes. I, I always felt a fault of previous ape suits has been that even though it could look convincing, they usually would see these human eyes staring back out of this mask. And uh, gorilla eyes are very human looking, but they're not quite the same. And I felt even if it was on a subconscious kind of level, you would kind of, because people focus on eyes, you would pick up this human quality from this. So I wanted to do, to do eyes that weren't human. Uh, we actually didn't go for real gorilla eyes because they don't show up as well, but we made a larger iris. 